In this video, we are going to help you understand the My Items grid. When you first log into SKU Grid, you are always redirected to the My Items tab. This is also known as the grid. However, if you happen to navigate away from here, you can get back to it by clicking My Items. The first thing you will notice are five blue buttons. Each can be clicked to provide you different options and functionality in SKU Grid and will be explained in later videos. Next you will see how many credits you have available and when your subscription is set to renew. If you ever run low or out of credits, you will see this area change to red text and indicate that you are low on credits, out of credits, and your items are no longer being checked. Under that, you will see the current server time displayed. SKU Grid operates on server time, which is central standard time. So if you ever have a problem or are concerned about the timing of an event, all times noted by SKU Grid are based on server time and not your local time zone. There are two drop downs and two different types of filters that can be used to sort through your items. Using the filters will be discussed in additional videos, but in short, the first filter allows you to filter by supplier changes with the ability to click a reset link so that the next time you use the first filter, you are only showing changes that have occurred since the last time you used the filter. The second filter allows you to filter your items based on marketplace or supplier, as well as a few other types of statuses. Down to the left is an option that says Show. You can select any of the numbers in the dropdown and it will change how many items SKU Grid can show you per page. Those with many items will want to set this to 1000. To the right is a search box. You can enter any eBay item number, ASIN number, part of an item title, and much more in order to locate your items in the grid quickly. Now we are down to the actual grid. Here you will see all columns displayed that you have chosen to show in your general settings. The first column is where you will see the image of your item. This is based on the supplier URL. The ref column will display anything that you've entered for your own reference in the ref ID field. If you're importing items, it will always say eBay or Amazon US or UK import. If you imported items from a third party application like Hydralister, it will always say remote import Hydra. The title column displays your supplier's title of the item not your title on eBay or Amazon. The compare item column will display a link to the item you've chosen to use as your compare item URL. For most people, it will be a link to their own eBay or Amazon listing, but some choose to use it to monitor more competitors, etc. Compare price will be the selling price of the item that you are using for the compare to item URL. In most cases, this is your own price on your listing. Compare shipping and handling. In most cases will be how much you are charging for shipping on the item you have listed. Compare stock will display whether or not the item you are using for the compare to item URL, in most cases your own link, is in stock or none for out of stock or ended. Keep in mind that since compare to item URLs are optional, you may not always see something in these columns if you have chosen not to use them. The supplier item column will display a link to the item at the supplier. You can click it and make your purchases when you need to fulfill your orders or use it to verify any changes that SKU Grid is observing if you like. The price column displays the supplier price. Shipping and handling column displays how much the supplier is charging for shipping for that item, if shipping is known. Keep in mind, if the supplier uses calculated shipping that is not known until checkout, it is impossible for SKU Grid to know that. Also, if you have set include supplier shipping and calculations to know in your formula settings, it will still display the shipping on the grid because it's been read by SKU Grid but it won't factor into your pricing. The stock column shows that the supplier is either in stock or none for out of stock of the item. 
if you are using compare to item URLs or a manual entry of compare price, estimated profit will display your estimated profit on the grid. If not using them, it will display a negative number. The reprice item column displays a link to your item on your selling platform, be it eBay or Amazon. It also displays the last time SKUgrid had to make a change on the last call. There are some additional columns. If you have chosen to display them for number of sales in the last seven days and overall number of sales, these two columns will display your current number of sales. Next, the retail price column will display the original price of the item if the supplier has marked it down. This is just for reference and not used in any calculations. The date updated column displays the last time and date that SKUgrid needed to make a change to your item and it may vary slightly from last call due to some of your settings. The actions column contains quick links to actions you can perform on each individual item such as history to see the pricing and stock history of the item, edit to revise your SKU grid entry or override formula, delete to remove the item from SKU grid, force reprice to put your item in queue to be checked and have its price and stock changed if necessary, report to report an issue to support, and recheck ASAP to have the supplier checked and information reported back to the grid but not actually change your item. If you scroll down on your page, you will see a count of how many items you have in your SKU grid account. Based on how many items you have SKU grid showing you per page, you may only be viewing, for example, items 1 through 100 out of 1000. There will be quick links to jump to additional pages of your items if applicable, as well as a previous and next link to skip pages. Below that is the add a single item form. This is where you can enter information to manually add an entry into SKU grid. Note, clicking the add item button just jumps you down to this part of the page. A little further down, you will find the ability to translate SKU grid into English or Japanese by clicking the respective link. The privacy policy in terms of use can be found at the bottom of this page. And finally, if you need help with anything, you can always click in the chat bubble in the bottom left hand corner of your screen to submit a support request or hop on live chat if available. These are also accessible by clicking on the support tab of SKUgrid. We hope that you've enjoyed this walkthrough of the My Items page. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.